she might come to bed and say, are you going to pray? And I say, nope, because I'm still mad. <laughs> she says, well, I am. And she never, you never pray <laughs> your, uh, your partner into shame. You, you, she would pray by the time she was done praying, my heart had softened and I prayed. Welcome to the Focus on the Family broadcast, helping families thrive. Welcome back to the program. Hey, great to be back. The thing we mentioned last time, we got to say again, you're proof in your own pudding. You've been married 60 <laughs> years, so you've got to uh, pat yourselves on the back and say, okay, we've done it. And, and you know uh, that everybody's trying to calculate. Yeah, we're, right. We're what does that mean? Still no, doing we got married. But you know, <laughs> here's the thing. It's such a great way for us to honor you because mm -hmm. you have the experience, and I hope young couples who are listening tune into that and tap into that because you've lived it. I've been married 31 mm -hmm. years. I haven't been married 40 years. I haven't been married 50 years and I haven't been married 60 <laughs> years. You guys have been there, done that. Mm -hmm. And you've learned so much along the journey. And that's the beauty for young people, young married couples to say, what can we learn from you? You've had the fights, you've mm -hmm. had the disagreements, you've learned this stuff and you filled this book, Smart Love, with great examples of your own failures. Mm -hmm. And that's helpful to us. Well, and I think that uh, one of, that's probably one of the most important books we've done, and because it it, it brings hope, and and there's a there's all kinds of tools to be used in terms of developing the skills, and the skills can be developed, which is full of hope. Right. Um, last time we talked about the SMART acronym. You mentioned these emotions, the BEP that we. Uh, briefly talked about. Let's recap for folks very quickly the SMART acronym and your uh, BEP. Well, the mm -hmm. SMART, the, the S stands for self-aware of my own emotions. And uh, I, I've got to feel, I, I got to be aware of what I'm feeling at least after the fact as a beginning point and then in the, in the midst of it so that I can grab hold of it and begin to manage it. And the okay. M... I was going to say, okay, ladies, so you're all saying, or many of you are saying, that's my husband. Yes. He doesn't understand. His, he's got no self-awareness. Self-awareness <laughs> is the key. Don't, don't They're sticking so with us the rest of the way, I guarantee don't it. Don't be but... so quick to point your finger at him because there's <laughs> three others pointing back at yourself. So that's the S of smart, then M. M is, is to manage my emotions, and I don't want to be controlled by them. I want to be able to control my emotions mm -hmm. okay. in a healthy way. A is accountability. I'm being accountable to myself, I'm being accountable to my spouse, and I'm being ca accountable to other couples. And I think that's extremely important that we have other couples in our lives that know us and pray for us and share with us and care for us. Okay, so we got SMA. Uh, SMA What's R? and R is reading the other person's, reading your spouse's Ouch. emotions, which is empathy. <laughs> I'm resonating with this one. I think this might be my weak link. I think sometimes I'm Learning driving so hard, to. I'm not Was it very... a low low point on your chart? Right? I'll have to go back to my test. <laughs> oh, no, no, we have Gene on the line right <laughs> yeah, now. Right, no, we don't. <laughs> hang up, hang up, hang up. But uh, So that's so, reading mm. your spouse, understanding yeah. your spouse. Their emotions. Their emotions. It's, their it's, emotions. It's okay, guys, come <laughs> on. You've got to be there with me. I mean, this is not something well, that's natural. Well, the other word there is to build empathy so I can understand neither, what you're feeling neither. is a good thing. Neither the R or the T are easy to do, but they become easier as you develop the skills of the S and the M. Okay, the so M. it kind of flows together like yeah. a river, mm -hmm. gains mm -hmm. a little more momentum. So yes. what's the T? The T is together in the land of emotions. We're comfortable, <laughs> we're comfortable with each other emotionally. We have wow. enough to be in that world together. So let's get to the, to the manage, the M of SMART, managing your emotions. Mm -hmm. Why is this war going on? in our brains uh, between the emotional part of us and the rational part of us. Because if you mm -hmm. think about it, who doesn't want that mm -hmm. better marriage? Yeah. Maybe not perfect marriage, but all the attributes you just talked about, mm. it would be rational for us to aim for that. So we wouldn't use anger toward our but spouse our, uh, or shame or our, whatever it might be. Our rational brain is often is subject to the emotional brain. Yeah, that's scary, isn't and it? And that's scary because we haven't, we haven't, and managing my emotions means I've got to develop my rational, the rational side of my brain. Uh, when we've been wounded as kids, when we've been, we, we've adopted a, a basic emotional posture of anger or fear or shame or sadness, uh, the, that's giving precedence to the 
the emotional brain. You give power to that. You give power to it, and you depower the rational brain. So you've got to activate the the rational brain. So there's there's a language for each of those four negative emotions. The language of anger is I should, you should, or you shouldn't, or you should, or I shouldn't. The demand that I make on a situation. It's like somebody cuts you off in the freeway, and we we get angry because they shouldn't have done that. Well, they already did it. So it's irrational. So I, I want to. Gosh, you're just going right at my weak spot. What are you doing? <laughs> so are we in a session here? Do I have to pay you money? No. <laughs> no, but that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly right. Yeah. You know, what, what else can be done? Pray so, for the guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's sometimes somebody cuts you off and you don't even notice it because your mind is somewhere else and, and you're thinking of something else and you just automatically tap it's the like brake and go on. Yeah. Uh, the language of fear is what if. And what if this happened? What if that happens? And I always say, if you're going to what if the negative, you have to what if the positive. Because only God controls mm-hmm. the future. You can't control the future by what ifing it. So you're talking about the possibility of this, go- this the deal falling through. Well, you've got to say, well, but what if the deal stays together and succeeds? You know, yeah. You've you got to what if both sides. Yeah. And then the, the uh, language of shame and and sadness is the same as if only, if only this hadn't the happened, and the, the mm-hmm. living in the regrets. Mm-hmm. Constantly, though, like Constantly. a vicious circle, yeah. mm-hmm. right? It just keeps going. So if you can identify the language of the, the emotion, you can begin to manage the language. Like the woman who was so angry that charred the, my door frame as she walked in the office. You know, I, I gave her an assignment to, to make a list of all the things she was angry about. I said, get an eight and a half by 11 sheet. She can make three columns, and the first column lists all the things you're angry about. Well, she, she came up with 27 pages. 27 pages? Of things she's oh angry about. <laughs> I felt sorry no for No wonder the guy. she scorched the, the <laughs> sign walking in your door. And I said, now, in the middle one, you've got to get all of what are, what are the demands you're making? And that's the language she uses, you know. So she says, well, when, I come, when you come home from work, and he had a pretty high-level high job, and you see the table set, the candles are lit, the kids are in bed, you should know I want some time with you. Instead, you get up from the dinner and say thanks and go to the office and continue working. So that's the should. Have. That's the should. So then I said, third column, you've got to restate it as a desire, as a wish, as a want. I want you to spend some time with me. And he's over here making notes. He said, well, I'll remember that <laughs> He probably that never time. thought of it right. at Never all. thought never. of it. Yes. What does that language of shame sound like in mm. the marriage? Just role play a little bit for us. What, what does that sound like between uh, a, a, shame? In a couple? Oh, wow. You should have worn that shirt. <laughs> you should no. have worn the other shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, anything I say that that can be critical can uh, can. I can put, take it as shame. shame. So so, uh, you you say to me sometimes I uh, come downstairs. Are you going to wear that shirt? And 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 I, and I think mm. well, I wouldn't have put it on if I wasn't going to wear it. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Pretty, pretty and, straightforward. Uh, I have then, a friend who had a situation. Like and then that. she may even remind me, well, you told me to tell you when things didn't match, you know. And, but what she, uh, criticism is always an indirect way to ask for something. Hmm. And if she had said to me, you shouldn't wear that shirt with those pants, they don't go together, I'd say, oh, okay. Because that was a clear statement. Mm-hmm. So there's a shaming in, in, and there's a trigger point for anger. For the the statement, That's are you going to wear that critical. shirt? Because yeah. I'm thinking, you think I'm stupid? I don't know how to put a shirt mm-hmm. on. Well, and what's sad is these little paper cuts mm-hmm. is what oh. derails a marriage. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's not necessarily the big thing, whatever yeah. that might be, but it's this kind of stuff constantly. And, mm-hmm. and many of them are are, are critical remarks that right. we make And it to goes each both other. ways. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you want to stand up for too, the ladies but, too, because oh, men can be critical and sharp and cutting and. You know, Many dismissive. women in the seminar will say, huh, "He's the one does the criticism," <laughs> but because I can't live up to his his demands. Mm. Yeah. But it, it's difficult. But but women are fighting it too. They're fighting it every way to try to figure out how can we how can we g- get the kind of relationship we really want without ever uh, having to uh, demand. Mm. So I take away the demands. <laughs> Uh, we've covered the the S and the M, and now we got to get to the A of smart. Uh, a is accountability. Yeah. So, what does accountability look like? Well, I, Jay, I was telling about this group of couples we've had, and that, that's accountable. But being accountable to each other, 
and being an open book to each other. Mm. There's, there's a lot of men in our area that their wives don't know the slightest idea how, how they stand financially, and the man wants it that way. Mm. And that's, that's counterproductive. That's being unaccountable. So it's a lack of trust. It's a lack of mm-hmm. trust. It leads to a lack of trust, but yeah. it, it's a failure at accountability. And accountability maybe has some negative feelings to it from how you grew up, but that, but the only way you're going to have a solid marriage that lasts into old age is to be accountable to each other in, in, in love. And, of course, we're talking to a couple who has been married 60 years, so you know what you're yeah. talking about. And there's something great about growing old together. Yeah. Really oh, I, yeah, I totally <laughs> agree with that. Jan, I do want, though, in this accountability area for ladies, I think um, wives struggle here because uh, accountability it can be wrapped in fear. Mm-hmm. You know, that fear so. that I mm-hmm. don't know what my husband's thinking. I mm-hmm. don't know what my husband's really doing. Um, you can put that into the context of he works late at night and oh, you yeah. can spin yourself into That's right. a whole lot of emotions that may or may not be accurate. You know, that mm-hmm. intuition that mm-hmm. begins to develop. How does a woman who's feeling that way, I'm not connected with my my husband, this accountability area, yeah. but not to come across mm. with the assumptions that you're doing something wrong or that you've mm. done something wrong and you come at that accountability in a way that's not constructive. Yeah. Well, I would I would think I don't know if someone worried about that has a, a a girlfriend or whatever but but to begin to trust whether the trust really feels like real, but I am going to trust you. I am going to um ask you things and I expect you to answer. Um, but in the midst of it, the thing that keeps coming to my mind is the praying together. If there's even hmm. a smidgen of hope that that That'll husband uh, is willing to even listen to you pray and then you hold hands or something like that. But praying together for Dave and I, since we began, what, 50 years ago, 40s. Uh, uh, 40. Yeah, 50 when, years ago. But anyway, we never missed a day. Even when he's traveling for Youth with a Mission, he used to travel. And he would get a phone somehow, and we always touch base. And so this starts to build the trust that we're yeah. talking about here. No, that's but, good. But, you know, you may not, they may not be able to get their husband on, well, on that level. But yeah, we, but, we had... We we did a book years ago on when couples pray together, and it's out of print, unfortunately. But we did a survey of the couples who had agreed to do it because we'd get a commitment from them to do it for six weeks. You know, AA says if you do something for four weeks, it, it becomes a habit. We figured with spiritual warfare, we better make it six weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but one lady wrote back, and she said, my husband won't pray with me. He's not a believer. But he's he said, I'll I'll let you hold me, and you pray. Yeah, and so she would. They would hug each other, and she would pray for them as a couple. And uh, the, I always have thought that, that that was a beginning of something that was going to God was going to use in a powerful way. No, I like that. But I think the, that the accounta- that's... accountability. There's something in praying together that is a gentle accountability that mm-hmm. keeps you on course with each other, and it's hard to. We, we've had a fight in the evening, and we we pray at night when we go to bed, and. She might come to bed and say, are you going to pray? And I say, nope, because I'm still mad. <laughs> she says, well, I am. And she never, you never pray uh, your, uh, your partner into shame. You, you, she would pray by the time she was done praying, my heart had softened and I prayed. You know? And so there was, there was that gentle accountability that, that regardless of what was going on, uh, if we couldn't pray together, we still tried, and we still did, usually. Okay, we've got the S and the M and the A, and now we're going to R. And this, this we need a little bit of time here, because I think this could be one of the world's greatest uh, deficits, mm-hmm. and that's reading your spouse's or the other person's emotions. Well, like, like we've <laughs> said before, it, it, it requires my being aware of my own emotions and being able to manage my emotions because now I'm not threatened by your emotions. And so I can, I can speculate. And, and a lot of it begins by speculating. And uh, some of it, th- there's some action plans in there like uh, looking for emotions in, in media and talking together about general emotions and getting to understand how you can, you can read 
what the other person is feeling by things that you've talked about that were neutral. What What is an example, Jan, uh, if I can lean on you, mm-hmm. and certainly jump in, but yeah. what is an example where you struggled, each other struggled with uh, reading one another accurately mm. or with deference? Or Do you have an mm. example in your 60 years of marriage? I'm sure there are many. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, a lot over the kids, a lot of... Now um, you're speaking yeah, my language. Yeah. Okay, oh, come yeah. on, yeah. give it to me. <laughs> oh, we have different different opinions of, of how much we should interfere, should mm. we not? <laughs> uh, that, that's very difficult. Yes. And uh, it is, it, it, it's hard to come up with, you know, I... I know better. I I was there. I saw it. <laughs> but but to understand that all this has to do with how we are on it, mm-hmm. and we and so we try to get together on at least one point of what we're yeah. talking about. Well, when we were dealing with our son's addiction, one of us would be kind and manipulable. The other one would be firm and trying to <laughs> draw the line, and and he could every, every kid in that situation can play you against each other. Then yeah, that's exactly right. Walks away with whatever he wants, and what we, what we had to learn to was how to read each other's natural tendency, but to have talked through enough that we knew that we had to stay on the same page. We had to be kind and firm at the same time. Right. Couldn't couldn't divide that. And now, let me ask you this in the context of marriage, though, where you have the husband who doesn't display a lot of emotion and you have the wife trying to discern, trying to read her mm-hmm. uh, her mates cueing. Well, you know, and you're, you're lost in that because he's not giving you a lot of signals. Well, mm-hmm. then then one of the things I tell wives is, is uh, oftentimes I I define the man as being afraid. So he's hiding. He's hiding. He's fearful. And, and instead of him rejecting you, he's, he's really hi- afraid of what he's experiencing and he's hiding from you. So if you can operate on that principle that his being motivated by fear, not by rejection, it can mm. change the whole dynamic between mm. you. And that's, that's, that's so sometimes you have to help somebody right. do and some empathy. So let's not leave people there. Let's say some of the audience just said, yeah, that's the relationship I'm in, whether you're the husband or the wife. Then, uh, How do they unwind that? How then, do they start a, tonight? How do they say, okay. You, you sit down after dinner and have, and say, well, let's let the dishes go for 10 or 15 minutes and talk a minute. I heard this thing on the radio today that kind of suggests that a lot of times you don't talk to me because you're hiding, you're afraid. And it goes back to what you learned from as a kid from your mm-hmm. mom and, and the way she tr- disciplined you. Talk to me about what that was like when you were a kid. And if, if I can get him to talk about what he experienced as a kid. Jan knows almost everything that happened to me as a kid. And I know mm. almost everything that happened to her as a kid. We've, over the years, talked about it because it's affected our here and now. It wasn't locked, it wasn't locked into the past. It was still operating in the present. That's it can be hard to have that appetite as the wife to say, I'm going to really listen and understand mm-hmm. this. Can it yeah. be hard? Mm-hmm. I would think it could be difficult, especially if you're upset. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But okay, yeah, blame it on your childhood. I heard that before. <laughs> I'm just role-playing with you because I want to really help people. It's not just blaming it on my childhood. It's trying to understand the pattern of behavior that I get caught in without even thinking. Mm. And you need to. Help, I need your help to pull me out of that. And then and we got to talk about some ways that I can experience you helping me pull me out of it yes. so you can keep me talking. Well, and those are the solutions you have in your book, Smart Love. And that's why we can't cover it all on the radio. Mm-hmm. If you're saying, this is us, yeah. this is where I'm at in my marriage right now, get a hold of us. Get a copy of the book. That's why we're here. You can talk to a counselor. Um, we've got to at least touch on T so we don't end with smart. <laughs> Let's end with smart, but we don't have a lot of time. So just one minute together in the land of emotions, the T together. Yeah, it's together. Uh, How comfortable are we together in, in dealing with our emotions? And, and the, the goal is to become comfortable with a whole range of emotions. Right. That, that's, that'll be the, that'll be the result of doing SMAR. So SMAR, <laughs> if I do SMAR well, I will do the 
I will be smart. You get the T. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it all builds on place. itself. It's a safe place oh, for I both. like that. That's good. Okay. Not only that, but scripturally, and that's a great place to end this mm -hmm. discussion, scripturally, that's what you want. I, I think the scriptural version of this is called becoming one flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Togetherness. Yeah. That's what that's saying. Becoming one emotionally. One emotionally. Mm -hmm. So you really are complementing each other. And I think putting a smile on the face of God when his design as being made in his image, male and female, is actually functioning because you are one. Yeah. And that is a beautiful picture of where I would want to be if you ask me the five-year goal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hopefully, maybe that could be done in six months. I don't know. Yeah. But create that plan. The book even has an outline on how to create that plan where you want to be together. Your spouse has to participate. Don't create the plan without your spouse. <laughs> That's true. That's right. And, <laughs> That'll and, be a disaster. And, and love is the end result. And love is never in the, the list of emotions because love is a different emotion. It's designed to come and stay and grow, whereas anger, fear, sadness, and shame designed to come and alert you to something and then go away. Mm, it's a symptom. It's, it's a symptom. And love is more than a symptom. Love is a way of life. And that's mm -hmm. our goal is to increase love. Wow. That is a great place to end. I'm sorry we have to. Dr. David Stoop and Dr. Jan Stoop, their book, Smart Love, go online, uh, get the book. That's the point. Uh, there's so many good resources. The assessment in there. I scored 98. It, can we move on, please? <laughs> I bet it's out of 120, so I feel like I failed. I'm already shaming myself here. Right under there. Man, I always want to get an A. But uh, it's just great tools to provide a pathway for you. And I want to thank both of you for being here, making the trip to Colorado. Sorry you had to leave sunny California. Yeah. <laughs> it was not a, not a bad move. Okay, good. Good trip. Well, We're great delighted to, to be here. Mm -hmm. Very, very special. Hey, I'm John Fuller, and thanks for watching. Get more info about Focus over here and more from our guests over there, and be sure to subscribe to our channel as well. <laughs>